Oh well, I give up. I can't seem to figure out how YouTubers do that thing where they pull their hand away from the lens and it looks like a great intro. Anyways, my name is Austin, this is Real World Science, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about all of my failed prototypes. So what is the deal with all of these failed prototypes, right? What are these for? Why did I spend money trying to build them? And why did they fail? Well, a little bit of context here. You already know about Coral Cam. If you don't, watch my previous video all about it because Coral Cam is awesome. But there are some limitations to Coral Cam. Coral Cam 1 requires some time to build, and if you haven't soldered before, there is still some soldering involved, and that can be intimidating to some people or inaccessible if you don't have a soldering iron. Two, a primary problem with Coral Cam is that it is limited by the battery inside the camera. These are cheap knockoff GoPro batteries, and they really don't last very long. You get about 50 minutes of runtime, 5 0, and you can divvy that up however you want between photos or video, but you're not getting any more. And there's no room in the underwater housings that we use to add extra camera batteries. So, what I did was a few months ago, I started thinking about kind of a sidestep from Coral Cam. Not something to replace it, but something to meet other needs that exist and to overcome some of the problems that exist with Coral Cam. So let's talk about some of the stops that I made on this journey of failure before I finally hit gold. First is this. This is a PCB that I developed based loosely on a design by Luke Miller. And this PCB, after you solder a bunch of very, very tiny components to it, basically is designed to utilize this. This is an ArduCam 2 megapixel camera, and this is basically a camera that works really great with Arduino. The problem with this, even though it's really, really cool, is that it is also really, really expensive. So after much soul searching and even more Googling, I came across this incredible little feat of technology. This is an ESP32 cam, and it contains a two megapixel camera, along with an SD card slot, and it even has a Wi-Fi radio on the back should you want to use that. I don't. But the amazing thing about this board is that for a two megapixel camera, the same resolution that I get in, in an ArduCam camera, this board costs $5 if you buy them in bulk and $8 if you buy them on their own. But there was a problem. While these boards are really budget friendly, they are not friendly to my batteries. They are super, super power hungry and they don't allow for low power sleep states like I want for Coral Cam because I need these instruments to be able to be deployed on the seafloor or terrestrially and to sit there for weeks or months collecting data. And a camera like this that really just sucks down the juice wasn't gonna fit the bill. But, I think I may have figured out how to fix that. So the very first prototype that I developed of what I'm calling KiloCam, here it is. Basically the idea for this is that these two boards simply snap together, just like that, into a convenient and pretty low profile little package. And while the ESP32 cam is not power efficient, KiloCam is. And KiloCam would be capable of controlling the flow of electricity to the ESP cam. When I don't need to be taking a photo with the camera board, Kilo Cam would just cut the power, thereby saving me all sorts of battery life. And on top of that, because this is basically an Arduino, Kilo Cam is capable of ultra low power sleep states. I've tried to make this board as power efficient as possible. Whoa, 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 Austin, slow your roll. You didn't tell us in the first place why you're calling it Kilo Cam. Well, in Hawaiian, kilo means to observe, and the word is usually used with reference to natural settings, like these trees behind me full of parrots right now. Kilo means to observe and to gain a better understanding of that habitat you're observing, almost like an intuition. And hopefully we can use that intuition to take better care of our natural resources. So that's my hope for KiloCam. I called it KiloCam because I want it to be accessible and to encourage more and more people to kilo and to better understand the natural world around them. This was the very first prototype of KiloCam. And the problem is that as soon as I plugged this PCB into a power source, it very quickly went up in smoke, telling me that somewhere along the road of designing this circuit, I had gone horribly wrong. So another $100 down for another set of prototypes, and I landed on this, another version of KiloCam, which as soon as I plugged in a power source, quickly went up in smoke again. 
So at this point, I had put about $300 into trying to develop this instrument, this sister instrument to Coral Cam, and I had nothing. I had absolutely nothing that would work. So I decided to try and work smarter, not harder, and I basically contracted out to an electrical engineer to review my design. And sure enough, right off the bat, he saw the problem, which was that I was using some incorrect capacitors and I had designed a little bit of the circuit incorrectly because I'm not an electrical engineer and I'm okay with that. But I am super proud of the result of that relationship because it's this. This board is KiloCam, and this is what I think is going to be the final version. It's basically an Arduino. It has an AT Mega 320AP processor. It has a real-time clock with a backup battery so it always knows what time it is. And best of all, there is no soldering involved whatsoever for the end user of this board. So if you get your hands on a Kilo Cam, you no longer have to learn how to solder to use it. It includes screw terminals right there. So when you want to attach a power cable to a battery, you just screw it right in. You don't need to solder anything. So I've told you that I have a working prototype of KiloCam, but I haven't told you how it works. Well, let's do that. So step one is to program this little ESP32 CAM board to take a photo anytime power is reset and to store that photo here in the memory card. Step two is then to program KiloCam, and both of these get programmed in the Arduino IDE. And basically you program KiloCam to take a photo at certain intervals. So you could tell it to wait a month and then wake up and take a photo every minute or every hour or every 30 seconds or every day, whatever you want. Step three is to take your Kilo Cam and hook it up to the ESP32 Cam board. And now as a complete package, the Kilo Cam board on the back is going to control the flow of electricity to the ESP32 Cam board on the front. When it's not taking a photo, this board in the front has no power supplied to it. So we have completely negated all of those power consumption issues that I talked about earlier. So let's say that you wanted to do some super intense habitat monitoring and take one photo every hour, way more photos than you actually need to get that job done. How long would a Kilo Cam run? Well, including the board on the front and the Kilo Cam board on the back, and based on a 750 milliamp hour battery, which is pretty small, these are the same batteries I use to power the Coral Cam PCB, Kilo Cam will do that job, one photo every hour, for over 100 days. These are crude back of the envelope calculations, but that is incredible, especially when you consider that the same task, taking one photo every hour, a Coral Cam would only last about 14 days doing that because it's not the use case that Coral Cam was designed for. And two really quick little cool side notes. First of all, if you aren't happy with the default lens on these ESP32 cams, based on some work on a YouTube channel that I will link down below in the description as well, I have found a way to 3D print an adapter so you could attach other lenses like this fisheye lens that I took off of a Coral Cam. Uh, these are standard 12 millimeter threaded lenses that you can find a ton of online. Side note number two, Coral Cam required the use of an extended back door for its housing to fit the PCB and the battery for the PCB. And unfortunately, those extended back doors never seem to fit the cheap GoPro housings that would come with those knockoff action cameras. So I end up having tons of them like sitting around in cabinets. I literally have like 40 of these things just sitting around. Well, let me tell you what, I have found a use for them because Kilo Cam fits perfectly in a standard GoPro Hero 4, Hero 3, Hero 5 housing. And you also can fit the 750 milliamp hour LiPo cell in there. You can actually fit several of these batteries in here for longer deployment times. I have finally found a use for all of my extra GoPro housings. Anyways, back to the rest of the video. So who's going to use KiloCam? Frankly, I don't know yet. This thing is brand spanking new. But what I can tell you is that with its lower resolution camera, it's probably not gonna be the same people that use Coral Cam. Coral Cam has a 20 megapixel camera that's probably somewhere closer to actually like 10 megapixels. And it's really good for things like species identification or really detailed shots of organisms changing through time. Kilo Cam is lower resolution, but it can stay in the field for far longer than Coral Cam can. It is smaller and it is also way cheaper. This entire board 
a five or eight dollar board on the front, plus what I'm hoping these boards will end up costing a user about $20 a piece, this entire board will cost you less than 30 bucks to stick out in the field. And it fits perfectly inside of cheap little knockoff GoPro houses that you can get on Amazon for 10 bucks. This board, KiloCam, I think is going to be used for things like habitat monitoring, where you're caring about how the tides move in and out of a wetland, or things like coastal erosion, processes that take longer to occur and that you don't need super high resolution data for. So I hope you guys are as excited for KiloCam as I am. And I am super, super excited about what this little camera could mean for the future of low cost habitat monitoring. I imagine a world where you could stick 20 of these at a site that you're trying to study and use them while each one is low resolution to get an overall higher resolution image from multiple vantage points of what is happening in that habitat or ecosystem that you're trying to monitor. I'm going to go build about eight more of these prototypes and stick them out in the field, underwater, in trees, in wetlands, wherever I can think of. And in a few weeks, I'm going to come back at you with an update video and the results of those deployments. In the description of that video, and I'll update the description of this video as well, I'm going to put a link to where you can buy a KiloCam PCB and build one of these yourself. I'll also include a video build guide of how to build and program your very own KiloCam. I hope that you're gonna build a KiloCam yourself, whether you're a researcher or whether you are a citizen scientist, because I want to see these things get used. People always come up with the most creative uses. And also because the money that you spend to buy a KiloCam PCB is directly going to fund not only this channel, but also my research research as a graduate student. I have a whole bunch more prototypes to build. This has been Real World Science. I'm Austin, and I will see you guys next time.